Okay, the next step in the process that we're going to be doing is filling this area right here that, that's produced because of the thickness of the canopy with the, the lower uh, corner interfacing with the skin. Uh, it leaves us a little void area. This is a little tool that's two inches wide that shows uh, the masking for our two inch wide fiberglass layup. But if I use it as a straight edge, it shows a void that, that's produced by that edge of the canopy. To simplify the layup process, we want to fill that area so that it's, it's not a hollow cavity that the fiberglass can be sagging back into. We're going to do that with a mixture of micro balloons and epoxy resin. And because the canopy is clear and that will be visible from the aft side, we're going to be using some gray tint to tint the mixture slightly so that uh, you're not seeing a, a white stripe around the, the base of the windshield. We'll also be using that for the first layer of the fiberglass layup so that you see gray uh, instead of just plain fiberglass from the rear. Okay, we're ready to mix up our epoxy micro balloons mixture that we're going to use for uh, filling the void at the base of the windscreen area. We use West Systems epoxy resin and hardeners. There's a lot of different epoxies uh, that, are, that are popular and uh, you know whatever is locally available to you uh, would be totally acceptable. Uh, this one's popular, it is available at a lot of the, the bolt supply places that, that you can buy uh, materials and parts from. Uh, so for most people, uh, it should be generally available. Mixing cups, we just use a, a simple clear 12 ounce Solo cup that you can buy in, in large bag fulls that uh, grocery stores, uh, that type of place. Um, whatever you use for a cup, consider it being sure that it's uh, compatible with the resin that you're using. If you don't know for sure, uh, do a small batch of resin as a test and make sure it doesn't melt your cup. Uh, these cups work fine with the epoxy and, and polyester resins. Uh, and they're relatively inexpensive, so we just throw them away. Uh, you can use a lot of other things for cups too, you know, saving little cups from uh, yogurt, that sort of thing, and use, use that as your mixing cup. Those usually do fine with the resin. So I have a cup here with some micro balloons, which is a hollow glass sphere that's extremely light uh, and is very sandable in the resin, which is why we're going to use it in this application. It's used in a lot of other places as a easy sand filler. Doesn't add a lot of weight. Uh, one caution with this stuff, because it is very light, it's very easy for it to get airborne. Uh, uh, not wearing one right now, but wearing a respirator or at least a dust mask is a really good idea uh, when working with that. You don't want get, get, to be getting that in your lungs. This is our pigment. It's also available uh, from places that, that sell the resin, uh, any of the bolt supply places or, or other stores that, that handle plastics and, and resins and adhesives, that type of thing. So we'll be using that uh, for, for tinting our mixture. We've got a Ziploc style bag that I'll be using as a, a pastry type bag for applying the mixture. Uh, makes it a lot less mess if you use that to put it exactly where you want it. So let's go ahead and get started mixing up some resin here. These are dispensing pumps that are available with the West systems and mo most of the popular systems have the same type of thing. 
where you just use one pump per one pump of hardener. Get that mixed up. I'm going to need another stick for the, the tent. The ratio of the tent is one ounce per quart of resin. We're not mixing up anywhere nearly a quart of resin. So for a small mix like this, just a little dab off the end of a stick. So that changed it from kind of a yellowy opaque to a gray. So when, when we know we've got the two liquids well mixed, now we can start adding some micro balloons. The goal is to add just enough that the mixture is no longer able to flow, which means I'm going to keep adding until when I tip the cup up on its side, there's no movement of the material in the bottom of the cup. See, that's very, very close, but it's still creeping a little bit in the cup. Okay, so here we have the, the mixture at the consistency that we want. See, it's stable in the cup and doesn't pour, but it's still very workable. So we're going to take and turn our bag inside out. Okay, so I'm going to start applying the mixture here. It doesn't take a lot, just enough that it's going to fill in that void. And slightly more is better than slightly less because we're going to be able to do a little bit of sanding on it before we actually start the fiberglass layup. You can do a little bit of tooling of the material to just kind of trowel it smooth. Something about like that. Okay, here in the transition from the front into the side, the, the canopy comes at a much shallower angle uh, to the skin. So the extension of a straight line off of the canopy is going to be to a point further forward. So we're going to be filling a larger portion than we were up in the front. So it requires 
applying a little bit more material. You don't even have to do it all in one pass. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back with a little bit more out in front of it. And we can also tool this. Get somewhat flat. Leave a little excess up above the, the finish level that we want to make it planar or match up with the surface of the, the canopy. And we'll just be sanding the excess off to finish it off before we start the fiberglass layup. Okay, here we are the next day uh, after allowing some time for our micro balloon resin mixture to cure up. As you notice, it already looks uh, somewhat finished uh, to simplify the sanding process while it was curing and had hardened up just enough to be able to uh, do some scraping work on it. Uh, some of the high spots were scraped off with a, actually a, a wood chisel, but in anything that's a sharp tool or scraper uh, that, that you can remove some of the excess uh, will work fine. It'll just shorten some of your sanding time you have to kind of watch the cure of the mixture and when it's still a little bit uh, rubbery and you can still mark it by pushing a fingernail into it uh, but not overly hard is about the point that you'll be able to do that. Okay we've completed our sanding on the filler now to show you kind of what the goal is so using this little straight edge, uh, it's sanded to just extend the plane of the windscreen down to where it meets the skin on the canopy frame. That's just going to fill in that void area for doing the, the glass layup on it. When you're done with the sanding, you want it to all be back to relatively clean uh, aluminum skin surface and canopy surface. We don't want to rely on bonding the glass layup onto previously laid in uh, micro balloon mixture. It's lightweight and good for filler but it, it's not good for uh, strength and, and longevity of the layup. So we want the layup to actually be occurring for the most part on uh, clean sanded surfaces. You see here where, where one of the clips it is there's a little bit of micro balloons kind of blending that out and that's okay in, in localized areas uh, but we don't want to get carried away and, and have a lot of that. So finish your sanding and contouring and then get all those surfaces uh, re-sanded clean with 80 grit sandpaper to be ready for doing the layup.